Hi boys and girls, my name is Richard, and I'm here to talk about different types of alternate fuel sources. No, 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 not those kind of methods. I'm talking about biofuels. What is biofuel? Well, child, biofuel is simply fuel such as methane produced from altering and fermentating renewable biological sources such as plant biomass and treated municipal and industrial waste. Thank you, uh, professor. But basically, in layman's terms, biofuel is burnable fuel made from fermenting organic materials such as leaves, grass, trees, roots, and even poop. Well, I guess you're wondering how someone in their right mind would think of making fuel from feces. No? Well, too bad. Roll the film. During the early 1900s, Rudolf Diesel, whose invention now bears his name, envisioned vegetable oil as a main fuel source for his engine. He was the first to demonstrate this by running his engine primarily on peanut oil during the World Exhibition in Paris, France. Thus, biofuel was made. Wait a minute, I thought Rudolf Diesel created diesel fuel. Well, yes. Yes, he did. He also invented the diesel engine and several different versions of biofuel. Oh. After the creation of biofuel, other automobile investors tried to make their own biofuel, including the famous Henry Ford with his corn ethanol. There are several different types of biofuel currently available on the market today. These include <gasps> bioalcohols, biodiesel, green diesel, bioethers, biogas, syngas, solid biofuels, second generation biofuels, and vegetable oil. Vegetable oil? Chief gas for life! Well, I forgot to mention that most of these methods require major experimenting and alterations. Bioalcohol is the biological enhanced version of alcohol, more commonly known as ethanol. It is produced by the action of microorganisms and enzymes through the fermentation of sugars, starches, and cellulose. Being the most commonly and widely used biofuel worldwide, ethanol is produced by fermentation of sugars derived from wheat, corn, sugar beets, sugar cane, molasses, or any other kind of sugar. Oh, just like beer! Yes very similar to the fermentation process of consumable alcohol. It can be used in most petrol engines as a replacement for gasoline or can be mixed into gasoline to any percentage. Biodiesel and green diesel are a form of diesel fuel derived from various oils or fats. These oils include soy, mustard, flax, sunflower, palm, hemp, algae, and many more. It is also known that biodiesel has the lowest emission rate compared to the other variants of biofuel and is therefore cleanest. Biodiesel is formed from processing oils through fractional distillation, which is the separation of a mixture by heating up various counterparts or fractions until unwanted components vaporize. Bioethers are the most expensive type of biofuel to produce, but is the most friendliest to the environment. They greatly reduce the amount of ground level ozone and contribute to the quality of the air we breathe. They also enhance engine performance, leading to better and faster cars. I don't like bioethers because they're expensive. Well, yes. That's basically the reason why we haven't already switched to this type of fuel. Biogas is material processed by anaerobic organisms. So basically, this is the biofuel that derives from poop. Cow manure, that is. On the other hand, syngas is a mixture of carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and other hydrocarbons processed through partial combustion. Solid biofuel is the usage of raw organic material such as wood, sawdust, grass, charcoal, and crops. So basically, when you light a match, you're using solid biofuel. We've been using this method of biofuel ever since we were cavemen. Second generation biofuels are biofuels produced from sustainable livestock. These include cellulosic ethanol, algae fuel, biohydrogen, biomethanol, or fissiotroph diesel. And finally, vegetable oil is. Vegetable oil! Ah! And welcome back. Although the straight and modified version of vegetable oil cannot be used as a fuel source for automobiles, but lower quality oil can and has been used for this purpose. Nowadays, used vegetable oil is increasingly being processed into biodiesel. 
Big corporations like MAN or BMW Diesel are using and selling this type of biofuel because of its cheapness. Vegetable oil is processed by being heated until viscosity is reduced, often by electric coils or heat exchangers. So now the complex ethical question remains. Should biofuel be used to completely replace regular fossil fuels? The answer should be yes, right? Biofuels are a clean, cheap, and an all-around wonderful alternative to dirty fossil fuels. Sss. No, biofuels are very dangerous and hazardous to the environment to certain aspects, and is also one of the most discussed and controversial topics talked about in current events. Biofuel causes problems in three different major areas, the environment, the economy, and agriculture. Aside from the good things that may come out of using biofuels, there are tons of bad things that will come out of using biofuels. One example is the amount of nitrous oxide that would emit from the fuel's wastes. Nitrous oxide is not only unusable, but is also 10 times heavier than carbon dioxide, leading it to be more harmful to the ozone than burning fossil fuels. Agriculture will be affected as well. As more and more people demand for biofuels, we would have our food supplies cut nearly in half. Farms would mass-produce biofuel plants and eventually cause soils to dry and become unusable. The underproduction of food and overproduction of biofuel plants would then cause inflation to rise in the world's economy. There is simply not enough rewards and too much risks. My opinion is to use biofuels little by little. As we slowly start filtering biofuels into our fossil fuels, civilization will slowly and surely overcome and become used to the idea of using biofuels. This way, I believe, the human economy, agriculture, and environment will retain their status quo and thrive on the benefits of using biofuel.